Hello friends, good morning. In my previous lectures, I have explained the breakdown mechanisms in gaseous dielectrics as well as in vacuum. Now I will start liquid dielectrics. So in this, I will discuss what are liquid dielectrics, what are the desirable properties of liquid dielectrics, transformer oil, and the breakdown mechanisms in the liquid dielectrics. So let us start with liquid dielectrics. Liquid dielectric molecules are more dense than the gas molecules. Therefore, their dielectric strength in general is more than that of gaseous dielectrics. And it is observed that the dielectric strength is more than 100 kV per centimeter. If you remember, the dielectric strength of the air that is 30 kV per centimeter and in general, the dielectric strength of liquid dielectric is more than 100 kV per centimeter. Now let us see where are the applications of liquid dielectrics. First application is in transformer. In transformer, they are used as insulating as well as cooling medium. Second is in circuit breaker. In circuit breaker, they are used as arc quenching medium. In case of circuit breaker, when circuit breaker operates, the contact separate and arc is generated between the electrodes. So, oil is used as arc quenching medium in circuit breaker. In case of cables and capacitors, they are used as impregnants. Petroleum oils, that is normally called as transformer oil, are the most commonly used liquid dielectrics. Now let us see what are the desirable properties of liquid dielectrics. First and the most important from electrical engineering point of view is the electrical properties. And this under this category number one is dielectric strength and this is the most important electrical property of the liquid dielectric. Dielectric strength is the ability of the dielectric to withstand the electrical stresses when in application and it is used as insulating medium. On one side it is in contact with the high voltage electrode or winding and on the other side it is at the earth potential. So electrical stresses are generated in the dielectric. So it must be capable of withstanding those electrical stresses. So it must have high dielectric strength. It is the most important parameter in the choice of given liquid dielectric for a given application. Basically, the dielectric strength depends on the molecular structure of the dielectric. The other factors which affect the dielectric strength are shape and size of the electrodes. This I had explained in my previous lectures that is size size of the electrode matters a lot. If pointed surface is there, then breakdown will take place earlier. Then temperature, nature of the applied voltage, whether we are using the liquid dielectric for DC application and if it is DC application, whether it is positive polarity or negative polarity, then AC application or impulse voltage. Then rate of rise of the voltage also matters. Therefore, when we are testing the transformer oil, the equipment which has motorized operation that is preferred because that keeps the rate of rise uniform as per the standard. Then time of application of the voltage also affects the dielectric strength of the material of the liquid dielectric. Impurities in the oil severely affect its dielectric strength. Impurities may be solid, moisture, or in gaseous form. The presence of even 0.01% water that is moisture in transformer oil reduces its electrical strength or dielectric strength by 20%. So the most affecting parameter in case of liquid dielectric is the impurity. And when we consider all different types of impurities, then moisture is the most severe parameter which affects the dielectric strength of the liquid dielectric.
If dissolved gases are of electronegative nature, then dielectric strength of the oil is increased. Why? Because electronegative gases remove the electron from the liquid dielectric. Electronegative gases in general have high dielectric strength. Therefore, they increase the dielectric strength of the oil. Increase in hydrostatic pressure increases the dielectric strength. So it is general that when we increase the pressure, obviously the dielectric strength will increase because molecules or atoms are tight, electrons are tightly attached to their respective molecule or atom. So increasing the hydrostatic pressure increases the dielectric strength of the liquid dielectric. Good transformer oil should withstand 30 kV for one minute under standard test condition. Now this standard test procedure I will explain afterwards. Second electrical property is permittivity. Permittivity is the capacitance per unit volume. Permittivity of most of the petroleum oils vary from 2 to 2.6 while those of Ascaris vary between 4.5 and 5 and those of silicon oils from 2 to 73. Next electrical property is insulation resistance. It is the property to oppose the conduction of current. Resistivity of insulating liquids used for high voltage applications should be more than 10 to the power 16 ohms meter. Next desirable property that is fourth is loss factor or power factor. It is the second most important property after the dielectric strain of the liquid dielectric. So before going into detail, I will explain what is this loss factor or power factor. When we consider insulation, it can be liquid, solid, gaseous or vacuum. vacuum. Ideally, its electrical equivalent is capacitor. This is the ideal dielectric. Electrical equivalent is capacitance. So here we are applying the voltage. This point is earth. So the dielectric is represented by capacitor. It is the ideal dielectric. So it is current I. Now for this electrical equivalent, if we draw the vector diagram, we are taking voltage as reference. As it is capacitive current, it will lead by 90 degree and this is the power factor angle. Cos phi, that is power factor is 0. Ideal dielectric, we consider for drawing the equivalent circuit and other function only. But practically, we don't have any ideal dielectric. Whenever we are considering the practical insulation, it has some resistance also. So practical dielectric is represented by this electrical equivalent circuit. It is resistance in parallel with capacitance. It can also be represented as resistance in series with capacitance. But here I am representing this parallel combination. It is voltage applied, earth point and practical insulation. It is represented by capacitor and resistor. So the current flowing is divided into two branches that is resistive branch current is IR, capacitive branch current is IC. Now let us draw the phasor diagram. We will take as re reference, voltage is reference. So this resistive component will be in phase with the voltage. This capacitive com component will be at 90 degree leading with respect to the voltage. And this is the resultant current I. Delta is angle between I and IC and phi is the angle between resultant current and the voltage. Now loss factor is defined by tan of this angle. So tan of delta that is loss factor will be equal to IR upon IC. So as IR, this resistive component increases, the value of tan delta that is loss factor also increases. Now for practical dielectric also, this resistive component is Resistive component of the current is very, very small as compared to the capacitive component. Therefore, tan delta is very small. Now, when tan delta is very small, it is approximated to delta. Here, delta should be in radians. And when delta is small, it is approximated to sine of delta and it is approximated to 
sine of 90 minus delta that is cos of 5. Therefore, tan delta that is loss factor is also called as power factor that is cos 5. Tan delta is equal to cos 5 means loss factor is equal to power factor. Now let us see what is the significance of this loss factor or power factor. Power factor or loss factor is a measure of the power loss because registry component represents the power loss. Therefore, loss factor is measure of power loss. Power factor of a liquid dielectric under AC voltage determines its performance under load conditions. Why it is considered under AC condition? Because if we consider the DC condition, then effect of capacitance will not be there. Therefore, we are considering this power factor for AC application. And in general, the power factor term is applicable for AC application only. Higher the value of delta, more will be the power loss in the dielectric. Loss factor is an important parameter in cable and capacitor systems. However, in the case of transformers, the dielectric loss in the oil is negligible when compared to copper and iron losses. In case of transformer, the iron losses and copper losses are there. So as compared to copper loss and iron loss, this loss factor is very very small that therefore it is not considered for transformer. But in case of cable and capacitor, there are no as such copper loss or iron loss. Therefore only loss taking place is due to this loss factor. Therefore loss factor is important parameter in case of cable and capacitor system. Pure and dry transformer oil will have a very low power factor varying between 10 to the power minus 4 and 10 to the power minus 3 at 50 hertz. Here the frequency mention, mention of frequency is important because there is capacity component and it is frequency dependent. Therefore whenever we are specifying the power factor or loss factor for AC application we mention the frequency. In general our frequency is 50 hertz therefore it is mentioned. Next property, so those were the electrical properties that is dielectric strength, permittivity, insulation resistance and loss factor. Next property is heat transfer capability. Liquid dielectrics are also used as cooling medium in transformer and cables and as arc quenching medium in circuit breakers. Therefore, they should have good heat transfer capability that is thermal conductivity. The reason is when we say electrical property, it is basically related with the insulating property. But liquid dielectrics are also used as cooling medium, therefore heat transfer capability is also important. Next is chemical properties. During application, due to heating and prolonged contact with metal and insulation, Gases and solid impurities are formed when in application the oil gets heated and it is continuously in contact with the metal that is body and the insulation. Therefore, when it is reacting at high temperature with the metal as well as insulation, gases as well as solid impurities are formed. They may be corrosive to the metal parts and degrade the insulation and insulating properties of the oil. Also, solid impurities impair the heat transfer capability of the liquid dielectric. Therefore, the liquid dielectric should have chemical stability that is, they should not react with the material in contact. So, in this lecture, I have explained what are liquid dielectrics, where are the applications of liquid dielectrics and what are the desirable qualities of the liquid dielectric. Thank you.